Some, sometimes, not always, but occasionally, and maybe you're not one of those, and those that will be joining us to watch them later, sometimes I wonder, well, everybody knows my middle name is Thomas, sometimes I doubt, and I love the passage where it says, I have faith, Lord God, but yet I help my unbelief. I have those moments too, like everybody else. And I wonder, God, did you forgive me? Your word says that you even count the number of the hairs on my head and that it changes daily. Lord, you know me that well. And your word tells me, God, that your eye is on the sparrow. So Lord, help us. Because in that moment when I have those thoughts, I'm sure others do as well. It's like, God, did you hear me? And, and it's been a bumpy road. <laughs> And I wish you could say from here on out till Jesus comes, it's going to be smooth sailing. I wouldn't be being honest, and I wouldn't be helping you to be ready for all things, no matter what. Amen? No matter what. Lisa Hansler, most of you have never met this beautiful young lady. She's only 57 years old, so that's just a couple years younger than myself. I like to think that's very young. Now, I know if you're 14, 15, you think that's very old. Hopefully you don't think I'm very old, because I'm not very old yet. I'm older than I was yesterday, younger than I'll be tomorrow. And this dear woman right here, 57, Lisa Hansler is the wife of our regional superintendent of Open Bible International Churches. So the Pacific Coast superintendent, the person whom I would call my apostle, my pastor, he took on that position from Gary Emery just a short time ago. And shortly after, they found out that his dear wife, Lisa, had cancer. And we began to pray. Lord, these people are on the front lines. They're taking a lot of arrows for me and all the pastors in the Pacific Northwest. God, protect them. And she went to be with the Lord just a few days ago. Lost the battle of cancer. And so there I was again. It's like, God, he's on the front lines. I, I know this man. He's been praying for me. He's been, taught, he's been trying to encourage me while he's going through this. So the last time I spoke to our district superintendent, Dan Leadership, I said, you know, because they always ask, how are you doing, Mike, in the house, Lakeside, how are you feeling? I said, you know what, I don't want to complain about anything right now. I just want to tell you I'm blessed, blessed, blessed. I have a wonderful church family who know me well and still love me. I am blessed, blessed, blessed. I have a wife who loves me dearly. I have three sons that have grown up now, and they still love God. And they love mommy and daddy most of the time. I am blessed, blessed, blessed. So we prayed for Lisa, and I believe, and we trust in have to believe now that even in this, God knows best. And his eye is on the sparrow. So I want us to remember to pray for these sin. We'll take an opportunity mm -hmm. to do that right now. In James chapter 5, it says, if anybody is sick, anybody is struggling, if you're home today and you're struggling and you need prayer, please call me. We've been disconnected for far too long. Please call. Email me. You know how to get a hold of me. Information's on our website. Give me a call so that I can pray with you. Been doing my best to go and visit people as we can, and we need to stay connected. And I'm believing that this season of separation will end, must end. We need to be together to encourage one another through these times. I want us to remember our brother Joseph Bennett, who is today in the hospital struggling with infection throughout the body now where they think that they might need to take his foot. And we are praying and believing in Jesus' name that will not happen. We have to continue to stand. And as I'm thinking about those things, and others of you at home perhaps, or us here that know loved ones that have been struggling through different things, that we would not give up hope. And that we could believe the word of God when it says, if his eye is on the sparrow, his eye is on you, but his eye is on me. And he's not forgotten. So can we just pray and believe that together? God, thank you that you hear our prayers. Even as we read a few moments ago, Father God in Isaiah says that as our words go out, they don't return void. You hear our prayers. And you know, Lord God, what is happening. That we don't have to be troubled because we have the King of Kings on our side. So God, we thank you and we praise you as we trust you, God, to comfort now those who have suffered loss, to comfort now those, Lord, who are needing healing. We are believing for a miraculous, supernatural intervention in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Oh, I don't know how well you can see that, dear ones. I keep playing with the backgrounds and so forth. His eyes are on the sparrow. Psalm 121, verses 1 through 8. And we'll look at Matthew chapter 10 as well. You probably can't even see that now. I thought I had changed it earlier, but 
I'm going to move to this. So I'll, I'll read this passage to you. If you have a Bible with you at home or on your phone, turn with me to Psalm 121. And I'm going to read uh, eight verses from Psalm 121. Uh, what an incredible promise. It begins as, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Verse 3, he will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Now some would say and argue that this is written to Israel, but do you believe that God writes the word of God for all people? That the word of God is applicable for all people in all time. So he's telling us, his eyes are upon us. Verse 6 says, The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Verse 7, The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. Verse 8, The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. 7 and 8 says, the Lord will keep you from all harm. What a promise that is. And I hold fast to that. He will keep you. Now sometimes we think about harm just here. I'm telling you, the most important thing that you can be assured of today is that if you know Jesus as your personal Savior and you're putting your trust in Him, He is saving and protecting you from the greatest harm of all. And that's eternity separated from all that is good, God Himself. He is protecting us from the eternal suffering. Our suffering now, the word tells us, and we know it to be true, is temporal. But for a moment, a moment can sometimes seem like a lifetime when you're in the midst of it. But the word says, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forever. He's with us. Throughout life, we may feel discouraged and, and down at times. And have you ever been there, felt that? Of course we have. Kind of a silly rhetorical question. We all struggle at times where we feel down and are discouraged. But always, I want you to always, can you say with me today, always? Always. Oh, Make sure you're with me. Thank you for the few that are here and you that are watching at home. Think about that. Always remember that He is by our side and that He does watch over us through it all. Through it all. It says, do not be troubled because we have the King of Kings on our side. His eyes truly are on the sparrow. Have you ever heard of that song and know that scripture? Sylvia Martin was the author of that song, born in 1866 in Nova Scotia, Canada. And she married an evangelist, and they together traveled all over the United States conducting evangelistic campaigns. And she worked with him on music during those meetings. And this song was inspired by a visit that Sylvia made to an ill and bedridden friend. We're told that her friend was discouraged by her illness, but remembered a God who watches over each little sparrow. And she therefore believed that the same God would watch over her. A lake when I'm outside and I love to go outside and I love to enjoy the nature and the beauty I look for the clouds the rain the Sun the moon the stars the birds whistling and singing to me and to you for us and I was reminded that when the birds whistle and sing that they might be singing for me as God's eyes are upon them he's watching me as well For the Lord is with us and he holds our future and our safety in his hands our deliverance and safety are promised and rest assured. Nobody protects like our God. Nobody protects like our God. Nobody keeps life and preserves life like our God. Nobody preserves like our God and nobody watches like our God. He is the great protector. And we can trust him. And we can sleep at night. Yes, we can even have sweet sleep as we lay me down to sleep. And trust and remember that our God watches over us. And at first glance, Psalm 121 verse 7 offers tremendous assurance. It says, the Lord will keep us from all harm. Well, I don't know about for you, but that's, that's a wonderful promise to me. 
He'll keep me from all harm. Does that mean that I won't suffer some things here? No, because obviously we see that. We witness that. We've suffered some things. But I think now more, maybe it was a little bit harder when I was 15, 16, 18, 21, 25, 35, 45, 55. Now I'm almost 60. I'm thinking about eternity, and it will last forever. I'll tell you that the next 60, 70 years will go really quick, even though it may not seem like it right now. But compared to eternity, wow. He will keep me in the palm of his hand for eternity. I am promised that I will not suffer forever, that I will know joy and peace like never before. You know, the sparrow is one of the smallest birds, and Kathy just set up a couple bird feeders at home, and we're getting all kinds of cute little birds, and my son at Christmas gave me a little pair of binoculars because he knows that we like to bird watch, and I'll sit in the window and I'll look at all these different birds and all the colors, and I'm like, God, what an incredible artist you are, what an incredible masterpiece you have created for us to enjoy. And the sparrow, one of the smallest birds in the world, and may be considered as no consequence to many people, and could be sold cheaply, but Jesus says God does, God does still does care and notice even when one of them fall to the ground. And if he does, he notices us as well. Let's see, oh... I don't know why that didn't change. So we'll just, they can't see that at home anyway. You know that. I've actually tried all different things. And if you're watching this at home, you can't see the screen. So hopefully you have the Bible in hand and we can get away from the scriptures being put up here for you. And you can hear them spoken and read them for yourself. Matthew 10, verse 29. says, are not two sparrows sold for a penny. That's what we're talking about them being the cheapest. In that day, uh, they would bring birds and other animals for sacrifice for their sins, and thank God we don't have to do that today. We have Jesus who gave it all once and for all. He said, it is finished. I am the sacrifice for all humanity. But then they would come and they'd offer a sparrow, and two sparrows sold only for a penny. Yet not one of them will fall to the ground, we're told in Matthew 10, outside of your father's care. And even, I love this piece here, even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. What an incredible promise. You know, if God cares about a tiny sparrow, dear ones, how much more will he care about your needs? You know that he says if you know Jesus and you follow the word of God and you do your best to be obedient to the things of God, not only is he our God, he is our friend. Some of us have many different types of friends throughout our life, but I'll assure you this, there was one friend you can forever trust who will never betray you and always have your best. In fact, his name is Jehovah God. And through his son, Jesus Christ, we are adopted into that family. You know, that is the message and the meaning of this phrase, his eye is on the sparrow. He watches over me. In fact, if you will let me, I'll read to you the lyrics from this incredible song. His eyes are on the sparrow. It says, why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eyes are on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I say, his eyes are on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eyes are on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Thank you, Sylvia Martin, for those beautiful words and poem and, and song now. Second Samuel 22 says it this way, My God, my rock, in whom I take refuge. They say again, you'll find that in Second Samuel chapter 22. You can jot that down at home or remember this or watch this later if you can. It says in Samuel 22, My God, my rock. In whom I take refuge, my shield, and the very horn of my salvation, my stronghold, and my refuge. My Savior, you save me from all violence, and I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Thus I am saved from all my enemies. Hallelujah. Throughout the word of God, we are promised in so many places of his protection. That his eye is upon us. He's not forgotten us. He knows right where you are right now. He knows what you're struggling. He knows what you need. The book of Nahum, not a very good book. You should go and read it. You can read it in a few minutes. Nahum, 
at, uh, chapter 1, verse 7, is the Lord is good. <laughs> he is a stronghold in the day of trouble. Hallelujah. He knows those who take refuge in Him. I said He knows those who take refuge in Him. He knows you. Is it encouraging to you today to know that the God who created all things knows you? He knows your first name, your middle name, your last name. He knows the day, the moment, the hour you were born. He knows your beginning, your now, and your end when you put your trust in Him. For the Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in Him. And I'm sure you've heard this cliche. God helps those who help themselves. And God bless me, you know, it was Ben Franklin who wrote that, who said that. I don't know if you knew that or not. I think his intentions were good, but I want to assure you, scriptures do not teach that God helps those who help themselves. On the contrary, the scriptures teach us that we are to put our trust in him, that God helps those who seek his help. Okay? So understand that today, wherever you are, even though it might sound good and we would want to say that to others, it's not God helps those who help themselves. It's God helps those who seek Him for help and put their trust in Him. None of us is safe until we take refuge in our God. None of us can have sweet sleep by night. No matter what medications or other things you may try, you can only true find, truly find sweet sleep in Him, in resting in Him and trusting Him. For tomorrow, it's unknown. I know we wish we had a crystal ball. No, not really. I don't. If we did, we wouldn't need faith to trust Him for tomorrow. God helps those who put their trust in Him. You know, we can seek and find additional refuge in God and we can go to Him in prayer and we can seek refuge in His Word. I want to tell you that there is no greater hope than the written Word of God. So I am encouraged when we shared a few moments ago about little ones and, and adults in other parts of the world that could never read and now they're reading the Scriptures. Because when I have one of those moments, when I have one of those moments when I forget that God's eye is upon the sparrow and even so much more on me, I can go here. And I can read Psalm 121. I can read Isaiah 54. I can read John 3.16. I can read the word of God that assures me that I'm safe. And that what I may be facing today is temporal compared to eternity. We have that hope that we can share with all peoples. For his eye is on the sparrow, and he watches over me, and he watches over you if you put your trust in him. We can take refuge in him. Now Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 puts it this way. It says, for I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. If he promised to be with you yesterday, today he'll be with us forever. We can trust his word. As I said a few moments ago, it's applicable, whether it be Old Testament, New Testament, whether it be old prophecy or prophecy yet to go filled, we can trust in His Word. And it's applicable for us today. It makes a difference. You know, in prayer, we find the refuge of comfort as we commune with one another and those who love us. That's why it's important that we are together, church. That we can encourage one another, pray for one another, can remind each other of the cliche, you know, keep on keeping on. Even better than the energized money, we can keep on keeping on because that which energizes us is God and by His Spirit. In prayer, we find the refuge of comfort as we commune together. We may find instruction that leads us away from danger as the Good Shepherd speaks to our hearts through His Word and through the communion of togetherness. The refuge we find in His Word is everything we need. Everything we need for our lives. Through His promises, we can have courage and strength and remember that He sees us and knows us. And when we make God our refuge, we can have security in Him and peace in Him and know that He's faithful and true. Go ahead and take that out of there for me, if you would. Just turn that on. Today, in the next couple of minutes, I want to take a few moments to encourage you. 
If you are there at home or here today, and if you need to know, I want you to remember that he's with you. Maybe you've been discouraged. Maybe I can only imagine my dear friend Chris and what he must be facing knowing that his lease is gone, but yet he knows that she's in a great place and the comfort that he could have. You know, that's the kind of protection that God's provided for us, that we could have peace. Go ahead and say it with me. No matter what. No matter what. It doesn't come from my circumstance. It doesn't come from the fact that most of the time I'm a, a, a cup half full, not half empty. It doesn't come from optimism. It doesn't come from anything except the Word of God. And I get reminded of that occasionally, that when I'm starting to feel like I don't have hope, it's usually because I haven't spent enough time in the Word today. I want to encourage you every day to read Scripture for yourself. A verse or two or three or four or a chapter if you have the time. But put the Word of God through that and you'll be encouraged. You see, we have a refuge of a, 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 or a covering that is greater than anything in the world and more powerful than any enemy that can come against us. I said, we have a refuge that is greater than anything that can come against us. And that's the hope we receive in God's Word and the promise. So his eyes on the sparrow, his eye is on you, and he's watching over you. God can protect us, and he can keep us. You don't need anyone else to cover you when you have his covering. And you know, truth be told, people will let you down. But he has always been there for me. For the years now that I've been serving faithfully, and I realize that the faithfulness is a big piece of that, that you've got to stay in. <laughs> so I encourage you that if you've stepped out, step back into the fellowship of God and hold on to His hand and communicate with Him day and night, night and day. Build that relationship. That's where that peace <laughs> and blessed assurance will come from. Is that constant, continuous communion with God. So be confident that God encircles you, if you will, surrounds you, that he takes care of you, and that he protects you. That brings peace like none else. Go ahead and turn this off up here so I don't have to look at all my mess up here. On my, that's my computer desktop that's cluttered the screen. That stuff will just confuse you. You can just shut it down. Be confident that God encircles you. Can you see that? There's a passage that I'm going to share in just a moment, and I, I see that picture now, and I'm trying to see that more, that those who are against, uh, uh, against us are fewer than those that are for us. And I'm going to share that passage with you here in just a moment. You know, the more you walk with Jesus, and the more that you trust Him, the stronger your protection or that armor, if you will, the sense of peace will become. And I would say that's something to be of good cheer about. The more you are with him, the stronger your sense of protection will come. So I want to encourage you, whether you're at home or here today, I want to encourage you to stay in the Word and to work and to see those promises that he tells us that he's there with us no matter what. The Lord can and does keep us, dear ones, because there's nothing our God cannot do. Matthew 19, verse 26 says, But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With man these things may be impossible. With God there is nothing that is impossible. So we continue to pray. We continue to pray for our loved ones like Joe and others. And we continue to pray even when sometimes like our dear beloved Joy and Elisa, God decides to do something different and take them home. We don't give up hope. We don't quit praying. We don't stop trusting God. Because it didn't go the way we thought it should. He's sovereign and God does know best. And we can trust in Him. And you find that trust through continually being in the Word of God. Having fellowship together. I hope that you were encouraged, family, just in singing some songs together. Hearing to worship together. Singing worship together. Lifts up your spirit and hearing the Word of God and reading the Word of God. There is no crisis or circumstance that can overwhelm you to the extent of giving up if you stay connected. If you stay in the Word. And when you start feeling those days when it's like, where are you, God? Are you not hearing me, God? Go to the Word and speak to Him. Be honest with God. Say, God, I'm not sure if you're hearing me today. Do you even see me? Then maybe He'll show you a sparrow. Or let you hear the whistling of a bird. Or feel the breeze of the wind to let you know He's with you. You know, what I realize more and more is 
God's never surprised or shaken by what's happening in our life. He knows every moment. He made all things. He sustains all things. And He rules all things, including every detail of our lives when we surrender to Him. All things. Even for those most difficult days, He's with you. You know, there's no heel that's on their songs and their scriptures written. There's no heel that is too high or night too dark for him. He's there. When what you can only see or, or what you can see only screams anxiety, I want to tell you to put your trust in him. See the strength of his power in all he has made. Surely the God who made the mountains can keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory and great joy. Jude one twenty four says, He can keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. So I say again, sometimes life screams anxiety, fear, stress. I've had too much. And when we put ourselves before the Lord and we pray and we talk to him and we read the word, all of a sudden, that anxiety changes. All of a sudden, there's a peace that can come over you. A peace that we need to share with the world and say, hey, we see what's going on. We're not blind. Our heads are not buried in the sand. We know, but let us pray for you because we know the one, the one who gives us hope. When even the religious leaders, uh, leaders later threatened the apostles and warned them not to preach the gospel, they prayed a similar prayer, saying, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. We need to be reminded, and we're reminded through the word, and perhaps even going out and seeing the magnificent, uh, I want to say, artistry, uh, masterpiece that God has created for us to see around us. You know, we live in a beautiful valley. I often say, worship the creator, not the creation, but see some of the things that God has created that might bring you hope. A big, strong fir tree. As I said before, the whistling of birds. Let the things of God's creation encourage you, but most importantly, find your encouragement through the Word of God and through the fellowship of coming together that we can encourage one another. You know, I think sometimes, where did the early church find the courage to keep witnessing? We think there's things that are tough now. Read history. Look at the scriptures of the things that they went through. How did they find the courage to keep witnessing when their loved ones, when their I won't be too, too, uh, too graphic, but when the loved ones were killed right in before their eyes, when they were threatened to say, deny Jesus or we take your head now, and they wouldn't. Where did they find that kind of courage? God, will I stand in such faith? You know, they begin by remembering just how powerful their God was and is. The power they could see everywhere they looked around them. We need to open our eyes to see so look around, dear ones. Look closely and know that the Lord our God can keep you beyond this which is temporal. That's how they were able to do what they did. They didn't see the moment in which they were in as the end. And these last several months and years, and maybe where you are right now, you're seeing this moment as the end. I want to encourage you that if you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior and you're putting your trust in Him, no matter what you're facing right now, this moment is not the end. The end is a promise of eternal peace. No more tears, no more pain, no more suffering. Eternal joy with Him. That's how those who've gone before us kept on going. And that's how we will in this day keep on going because we'll remember the moment we are in is not the end. Trust God. No matter what is happening in the world, you can still rejoice because if the hills around you suddenly look terrifying, remember he who made the hills. And remember that God's got you covered, that he's watching over you. Remember that those who are with us are more than those who are against us. Remember the story. Go back and read the whole story in 2 Kings chapter 6. Read chapter 5, 6, 7, and 8. By the way, read the whole book. But here is a moment when one is in fear and they're asking, we're overwhelmed. We can't go. We can't go. Everywhere we look, those who are against us are so much more. And the prophet prayed that the young man who was with him, his eyes would be open to see. And here's what it said. So he answered the prayer and says, do not fear for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. 
And he opened his eyes and he could see the chariots of fire in the spirit realm encamped about them. So I've been praying, Lord God, open my eyes to see that even though at times I feel like we might be a minority here on earth because we're trusting in Jesus, I think I open my eyes to see the spirit realm, to see that those who are encamped about us, that your covering, your hand, is so much greater and strong and mightier than that which I'm experiencing, and that those who are with us, the legions, everybody say legions. legions. That's a fun word. Say it again. Legions. legions. That the legions of angels who are with us Fighting, even now, the principalities and the powers in the heavenly places, that those that are with us are far more than those that are against us. We are part of the greatest army to ever exist and that will ever exist throughout eternity. We are a part of God's army. And we could be of good cheer. And we can keep on keeping on. We can keep on marching in the army of God, if you will. Because you know what? In the end, we win. And there won't be any last minute field goal for the other team. If you watch the Super Bowl last week, you're like, no! But it all turned out fine, sort of. But for us in eternity, it will turn out fine. No sort of about it. No last minute win for the opposing team. We win. So I can lay me down to sleep at night. And pray to the Lord of my soul to keep. And trust him for sweet sleep. That I need not fear tomorrow, because tomorrow we win. Tomorrow we win. Let me pray this peace over you. Taken from the book of Numbers, I love this uh, apostolic prayer, if you will, and I love to pray it over you. And I often do. So hear the word of God today, comforting you and keeping you. And I say, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. And be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Be blessed today, dear ones. Be encouraged. For his, if his eye is upon the sparrow, and I assure you that it is, then his eye is upon you and he's watching you. So be blessed. Have a blessed week. I believe we'll be having this object class tonight via online Zoom. We won't be present live, but we'll be doing it via Zoom if you can join in. Be with us there. Be encouraged. And have a blessed week. We'll see you back here next Sunday. Love you. God bless you all. Close the screen first.